The healthcare detective Frank Lally has written a book for Simon & Schuster about how to get affordable health care. Called Your Best Healthcare Now, it is available online, in-store, wherever fine books are sold. Mr. Lally is also the health correspondent for Parade and the former editor of Money and George magazines. And, as listeners may or may not remember, uh, we also have an open case, the healthcare detective on the case, his own, uh, and that's his uh, UPenn clinical trial. I think I've got that all right. Anyway, he is reporting live from Philly. Hi, Frank. How are you? Yes, I'm fine. I'm back down here in Philly. Um, now, we came, on, we came on down a couple of days ago. This is for my two-year checkup on the clinical trial, highly experimental, and I'm going to give you the results of that. I, uh, I think listeners, uh, a lot of listeners uh, may recall, I have a blood cancer. It's called multiple myeloma. I've had it since 2008. It hasn't been too bad. I mean, who wants a cancer? But it hasn't been too bad until a couple of years ago. And that's when uh, the chemo cocktails and everything else they could throw at me, little by little, they stopped working. And I was kind of running out of options. Luckily, with the help of my doctors at Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York City, uh, I got into a clinical trial at the University of Pennsylvania. It's actually the Perlman Center for Advanced Medicine. That's Ron Perlman's father, a real philanthropist. Uh, it's a spaceship kind of facility. They uh, at the absolutely at the cutting edge of medicine. I was very lucky. Got into the trial, and the trial has worked now up to this two-year hurdle that uh, patients face. Um, so. I've been in complete remission now. I call it remish. Okay, <laughs> don't push your luck. Um, but I, but for two years I've been fine. So now I had to come back down to Philly a couple of days ago for a head-to-toe PET scan to see if the tumors in my body, and I have many of them, they're tiny, and are they? Do they continue to shrivel and look actually end up being like little dried-out raisins and no threat to me whatsoever, or are they? Or have they kicked back into uh, into action? So that's the two year hurdle I face. So before I tell you how that worked out, um, you know, I I love Philly, and uh, Jill, you love to hear about the restaurants down here. That's in Philly. right, and and well, we know <laughs> because you you t- you told your listeners last week that you were you know that you guys were going to go for a little bit of a you know a few few days, and we know oh. also that. That Philadelphia is rather civilized, and now I know that uh, you have a daughter who's got uh, a, a ceramicist who's got uh, some of her works in one of the restaurants. So Absolutely. So there's a place called Hiroki. It's named for a guy named Hiroki. Uh, it's a new Japanese, uh, high-class, omakase, you know, the, what they're making for you that night uh, joint uh, in Fishtown, hot neighborhood. Um and it was terrific. And yes, they do feature uh, my daughter's bowls, uh, along with other ceramicists, uh, very particular stuff, very military precision. You've got to be there at eight. You sit down at eight oh five. They are all the meat, all the uh, little dishes are lined up and so on. Uh, they take away your chopsticks for the sushi flight, which comes at the end of because you're supposed to eat that with your hands the way they do in Japan. And um and it's at the end of the meal where you think, oh, my God, this, it's been a fabulous meal. I'm so satisfied. And then oh, along comes this whole sushi flight. So that's one great place, Hiroki. Then we went to Little Nona's, a little Italian joint. Uh, they feature Neapolitan ragu, uh, <laughs> like my wife makes. Sensational. And then there's another restaurant called The Love, which is right across the street from the hotel that we always stay in, and that's the AKA Rittenhouse, right on Rittenhouse Square. It's a, it's a residential hotel, and I'm actually in a second floor suite that they set me up for today, uh, overlooking the Rittenhouse Square, uh, all the downtown shops. My wife used it while I was in the trial. It went on for a month, and it allowed her um, to have our daughters join us and, uh, and, and from time to time, and also for her to get away from the hospital, walk around the neighborhood, go to the shops. There's Barney's around the corner and Bloomingdale's and, and the local shops here. And So anyway, so uh, our good friend here is Mahika Bega. She takes good care of us. So I highly recommend the AKA Rittenhouse for any trips down here. And the restaurants and the museums are fabulous. So back to me uh, and my trial. And, so, and just because there's always anticipation uh, or... 
mm-hmm. whatever, you know, when, when, whenever there are scans or tests or whatever, do you know up front that there's something else that can be done if it doesn't work out the way everyone wants it to? Yes, um, because from time to time, I have two doctors that I meet with regularly, right? At Memorial Sloan Kettering, I have Sergio Veralt, and we talk about, okay, if this stuff stops working, what do we do? And then down here at the University of Pennsylvania, I've got Edward Stockmauer and uh, and and Ed and I talk about, okay, if there comes a point where this doesn't work, what will we do? And there's a debate about what the next steps would be depending on reaction. So, no, I'm not out of all options. And that's, but you, you know, look, I'm not taking any cancer drugs right now uh, up to this uh, trial, that I, up to this checkup I just had because I don't have any cancerous activity and no drugs makes you healthy. I mean, these cancer drugs are tough on you. So there's always something else you can take, but you don't want to unless you have to. So it's, it's essentially two years to this day, actually that I had the clinical trial. And, you know, it, it sounds like science fiction or medical fiction, uh, but this is the way to, cu- this is the best way to cure cancer and get two cures for cancer uh, that anyone knows about it. And that's when using your own uh, immune system to attack your own cancer. So w- the way it works is um, you go on into a clinical setting and it's like giving blood. It's a little transfusion. The blood is run through a machine that extracts your T cells. We all have them. They're the these are white blood cells, but these are fierce fighters of cancer. And they're taken to the lab and they're turned into fighters of your specific mutations. This is these are the proteins that sit on top of your cancer cells and camouflage them. This stuff says, aha, I hate that camouflage and attacks the cells. When that happens, you get a fever because there's, you're disrupting your system, obviously. I had fevers for 22 of 24 days, which set all kinds of records down here. And that was actually a very good sign. So, look, up to now, this trial has worked great. So I'm among only three of about 21 people who actually got into the trial. They looked at 33. Only 20 or 21 of us got in. Only three of us got what is called a durable response, which means you get two years or a little bit more than two years, as in my case. Uh, This I did not know, Jill. One person in the trial, and that's one within the 20 who actually got treated, not just considered, but treated. One of them has died. The other thing, and he was very sick going in, and he died at day 24 of the trial. Um, I also did not know that Counting from the beginning of the trial to now, so we're dealing with 20 people, something like that, even people who were helped, of them, 13 have died. So this is still early days and it's still experimental, and the few of us who've gotten two years uh, without any cancer are quite fortunate. And then the question is, and this is the real medical question that they're trying to get to, why me? Why Why this guy, Lally? Uh, one person died, 13 others died later. Uh, why is this guy, Lally, doing so well? Now, I think, honestly, I think part of it is the, all the support I've gotten from family, friends, and, and loved ones, including uh, people like you and others who, who've just been cheering me on and lighting candles for me and infidels who prayed for me. And I think that all really matters. Uh, there's possibly on the scientific side, the way my, my T cells were harvested, I think had an impact on my treatment as well. So back to 2010, remember I got the cancer in 2008, but then back it, 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 it was not serious and we didn't really treat it until 2010 when it started to act up. Back in 2010, I got a a chemo cocktail, and that nearly knocked out uh, the cancer for a while. I was almost in complete remission, but not not quite. Anyway, at that point, they harvested my T cells. They went in for that transfusion. They took a little bag full of my T cells, which are peach colored, uh, and they put it in the refrigerator against the day that I would need these T cells to be reprogrammed to attack my uh, mutation. So they just sat around and and waited. So 
the theory is that, therefore, I had these essentially, these were T-cells that were eight years younger than I actually am. They were taken from me when I had virtually no multiple myeloma, just the barest amount. So these were relatively healthy T-cells. Now, listen to this, Jill. What if we can skip that step, okay? What if we can go to outside donors? And I'm not talking about identical twins now. I'm talking about people walking on the street. What if we can go to outside donors and get them to donate their very healthy T-cells, and then those T-cells go to the lab, and in the lab, these researchers manipulate, re-engineer the cells so that they're universal CAR Ts. That is, they can be engineered to attack specific mutations common to multiple myeloma. So there are proteins like BCMA, CD19, these camouflage um, cancer cells. They're very common. Almost everyone with multiple myeloma has a lot of them. Uh, what if they can make it attack those cells, those uh, proteins, plus take out anything in the T cell that would interfere with the effectiveness? So now, instead of one-on-one -on -one medicine, my T cells to the lab, back to me, what about donor T cell re-engineered into a universal T cells that could go to multiple people, multiple people? Now, that's, that's a real breakthrough. Um, the experiments have started at the University of Pennsylvania. I learned on this trip, not only there, I think there, it's also ha happening in Boston, might be happening in other places. And that will be, that will be revolutionary. Right. Uh, because then, then, then CAR T as an option can be an option as soon as you're diagnosed. It's what doctors call first line or researchers call first line treatment. So there are about 40,000 people who get uh, multiple myeloma every year, and any number of those have serious cases. And instead of going through the chemo and going through a stem cell transplant, instead of any of that, um, they're saying, well, hold on a minute. Let's just get these donor cells, make it again, and get this universal T cell, and let's make that available to people. Far more people would be able to get this immunotherapy there would be less suffering because you'd be getting treated rather than waiting for and see if these Other lineup of work. chemo drugs can work or not work. Right. And all those chemo drugs take a take a toll, as as everyone knows. And and here's the other key point, Jill. Right. This you're, would greatly drive down the cost. Quite right, and that's what I was thinking of because you are down to your two minute warning. But I will say, when we first started talking about this, you know, one of the things was how um, special it would how you had to do all the other things to get to this point That's and right. if it works I mean imagine how much better your body is going to be just not having to go through all those other things to get to this point of no return when you get to with any luck return right my very good friend Dr. Eric Rose who by the way has a house uh, up in Sharon um, said to me why are you going through that stem cell? That's, I don't think that's really going to help you. Uh, you should be going directly for, uh, for, the, for the T cell. So, yeah. so when I went through the stem cell, that's when they, har that's when they was able to use my harvested uh, T cells, which are relatively clean and healthy and eight years younger than I am. Well, the stem cell didn't do anything, but I had these new T cells in my body. Okay, So it's almost like being diagnosed immediately and getting and getting to CAR T. So it, it would greatly drive down the look, the the cost of this medicine is uh, treatments is Still something staggering. anywhere from three hundred, you know, three hundred and seventy five thousand yeah, dollars to a pop. half a million dollars. You put in the hospital stay, it's over a million bucks. I mean this is crazy. Yeah. If we can go to a universal T cell, oh my god, and imagine a universal T cell that they could manufacture, mass manufacture, and you've got donors. Oh, more. That, and now you're still, changing and the whole game. Right, and still not charge that much for it. So in your final so, 20 how'd seconds, do? how'd you do? Yeah, so how'd I do? I did fine. Uh, I felt good, um, and therefore they said, look, you'd be feeling it if, if, the, if the tumors were acting up. So that was a good theory. But actually, hey, maybe they're right. So it, I have no cancer activity, so I have no cancer meds. 
continuing now for more than two years because I'm cancer free. Um, and I got to tell you, Jill, <laughs> this is one of the reasons I love Philadelphia. There is Hiroki and a little need, little notice and uh, the love restaurant across the street, the AKA at Rittenhouse Square. Those are things to love about Philly. Uh, but coming down here and getting affirmed that I do not have cancer, I remain cancer free, uh, makes Philly a, a favorite place for me. Thank you, Frank. Congratulations, Frank the healthcare detective and the health correspondent for Parade. Send your questions or concerns about finding affordable health care to healthcaredetective at robinhoodradio.com. Frank will try to address as many of your questions as he can on future broadcasts. Also, look for his book, Your Best Healthcare Now, available online and in store. And then we've got Nina Deshuse Lally, her ceramics at Hiroki in Philadelphia. 